coming this August and available for order right now is the new Cundy Cannery Kit. Something brand new at Bar Mills, a terrific looking little building, not too, too big, but certainly a real craftsman kit in the style of the Sokols or Schmitchens, you know, the ones that we've had but are no longer available. We designed this with some different design elements to help keep the modeling interesting and Jack here actually built the prototype. So what we're going to do now is kind of pass it over to Jack so we can talk you through this and uh, you can see uh, and learn a little, little bit about the kit. Now on your screen you'll see that we do have close-ups because obviously on the video we can't get too close but we will be passing close-ups along the screen during this uh, presentation. Uh, please take a look, and uh, hopefully you like this as much as we absolutely do right here at Bar Mills. Hi, this is Jack Ellis here. We're introducing our new kit, which is the Cundy Cannery, uh, a fish and seafood cannery that will go along with the Cundy Village if you want to use it that way, or you can use it as a standalone. This one can be built either way. It can be built as a standalone in the middle of the woods if you want, or it can be built up against uh, a dock or sea, which allows you to transfer seafood right in and onto the rails. You know, Jack, before you even go on, you mentioned seafood here, but we live in Portland, Maine here. Mm -hmm. And if you're familiar with B&M, do you know what that is? Baked beans? It is baked beans. It's right in Portland, and what they do is they put beans in cans, so it doesn't have to be. No, it fish. doesn't. This is a, we, we've, we've themed it as a cannery, but it can be many other things. Um, as we say, almost any of our kits can be done that way. You don't need to make it exactly the way we, we tell you to. Although we get upset though. No, we don't. <laughs> um, it does come with a lot of detail parts. It'll come with all the lights and the light stands. It'll come with the entrance here and the, and the lights on the building. It has a slate roof and it also has a rigid, rigid steel roof. A rigid, yeah, excuse me. Rigid no. steel roof. Jack, can you say that? No, I can't. It's a raised seam roof, excuse okay. me, we'll go that way. And that has it in several places. Um, it does have um, a loading dock on this side, as you can see, and that does come with everything you can see here except for the people and the landscaping material. Uh, I had a bunch of doors here, kind of interesting trifold door, um, which was original prototype that we got off a of building. Uh, it has its own little water tank. Um, it has a it's another section that they can unload and load things from the back of the building, which gives you a sliding door and a couple open doors. Well, let me ask you, prototypically, this building would have stood from, well, it would be here in New England today, even in 2016, but you figure from, what, 1915 forward or so? Oh, yeah. Oh, this could be, yeah. This could be, yeah. It's a, it's a typical barn construction, so it could be, you know, real old. Well, the nice thing is, we, you know, we put tracks on one side. Yep. But you don't have to. It could be a road on one side right, and water be, on the other yeah, side. Yeah, it could be water and road. It doesn't have to be tracks. Um, we make it because we are model railroaders. Most people do like the tracks, so it's one thing that we like to do. Add the tracks to it so they have a link to the model railroading. The back side is, um, it has the big smokestack and a couple of ladders to get up onto the roof to do some work. A little sign on the side. Comes with some insta fence, some detail parts. Um, we the, also, win the windows are uh, wood in this kit? No, these are all uh, injected plastic windows and they do have some detail. They have some of our fans and a vent that pop right into the windows. They're actually exactly the same size. You don't even have to trim them. And those all come with the kit? They come right with the kit. Yep. And, and as far as the freight doors, we never use plastic ones? No, we don't use plastic doors. We, uh, our freight doors are all laser cut. That gives us the individuality of the freight doors. Um, some of the smaller kits we do use plastic, but most of our big kits we cut our own doors. Well, it's a craftsman kit and yep. uh, it calls for a craftsman price, so let's uh, We've let's had a nice that way. loading dock on this end. Uh, it really, it really kind of in, very interesting. It's a covered dock. It doesn't come with a truck, but it will have the, the fork truck. It's forklift, yes, forklift. it will. Yeah. And that's about it. I mean, it's not a hard kit to build, straightforward. Um, weathering and and detailing is kind of the name of the game, and when you're done, you're going to get a nice, nice looking little kit. How long did it take you to make this prototype? The prototypes are hard to tell um, because you're kind of going, you're, you're designing as you go. But I would say this one is about uh, a week's job, a week and a half maybe, when you do all your painting and all your weathering and all your uh, 
uh, weather chalking. Well, let me ask you, normally I like to use polyscale. Of course, polyscale, Floquil, it's kind of uh, not available anymore. How did you approach getting the colors you did on this kit? Uh, as, I mean, can anybody build this or are you out of luck if you don't have the polyscale paint? No, um, most of the paints that I use, believe it or not, in this building are all craft paint, acrylic craft paint. When, what do you mean exactly by acrylic? You go, they're, they're a water-based acrylic paint that you can buy in any craft store, Walmart, Michaels, things like that, Hobby Lobby. Um, and some of it is just mixed with water to make washes. Mm -hmm. and then you build up the washes as you go so you use a thin material and then I use it on the walls we use a what we call a dry brushing but it's a very heavy dry brushing which means we're dry, putting on more paint than a r light dry brushing but we're leaving spots that aren't covered with paint and then when we go over with ink and alcohol or we go into the hunter line either one it's going to stay in those open pieces of wood and it also dissolves a little of the al uh, the little of the uh, the little paint, a little of the paint on the edges and kind of blends it in. It doesn't keep it a, a hard edge. So this will be the, uh, this is the actual Cundy cannery. This is the prototype. It will actually be slightly embellished in the finished kit. Uh, the price on this is $159.95 plus shipping. And we are taking orders right away. There, it is going to be a limited run kit, as you might expect. Here again, if you think back to uh, Schmitchens and if you think back to Higginbottoms and you think back to Sokol's and you think back to Pinkham's palette, these all fall, fell within the same under $200 category. A little bit quicker, this is not the middle of the winter, we know it, so this is a little bit of a Craftsman kit light, quote unquote, but uh, certainly not, uh, one, not one of our regular offerings where we don't have all of this available. So um, at this point, I think we're just going to call it a day on this. Follow along with the photos if you haven't already, and we'll be back with a couple more seconds of information. You know, although this uh, video will only be kind of super relevant the week before the NMRA convention in Indianapolis, the fact of it is most of this information will stand until we sell out of this kit, which, yeah, we will. And uh, with your support, uh, we'll continue to do this kind of work. But Jack, I know you had something in particular you wanted to kind of bring up uh, regarding this. Well, if you're going to attend the uh, Indianapolis convention, uh, we're going to be running, I think, five clinics. And in most of the clinics that we're going to do, mostly all the techniques we use to build this building will be illustrated or demonstrated, or they'll give you some kind of handout that'll show you how to do these techniques. Well, that's great, and we hope to see many, many of you in Indianapolis. But if nothing else, come on up to Bar Mills. We have the Narrow Gauge Convention coming up uh, in early September. We're going to be giving open houses here, no charge naturally. That's not the way we do things. And uh, as far as anything else goes, we appreciate your support. We know that without your support, there'd be no Bar Mills, and we thank you for it every day. So this is Artie Fahey. Jack Ellis. And uh, that's it for uh, this edition of The Daily Moose.